welcome back to another Counter Attack podcast with myself, Daps. Um, yeah, guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, as always, got another podcast for you here with a player that, um, you know, I've been trying to get him on for a while. But um, to be fair, as soon as he heard about it, he agreed to it. But um, we've got another Blackburn player, so I've been trying to stagger them out so that we don't just get them every week. But um, yeah, so today I've got Bradley Dack, who's on his way back from injury. So um, I'm just going to bring him in here. And then, as always, we're just going to have a little chat and just see how things go. So, um, like I said, just keep, you know, subscribing, liking, sharing, everything. And um, hopefully we're just going to have another good one here now. So let me just get him in. Yes, my bro. Yo, bro, you all right? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, I'm good, man. Just chilling. Good, 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 man. Thank you for doing this, man. Um, I know. No problem. I know you've probably got like a load of offers. And well, did you get a load, a load of offers to do interviews and stuff like that? Uh, I think like a lot of people are doing podcasts now, isn't it? So yeah, quite a few people ask me to do podcasts, but I like to do it with people that I know. I know people that have done it with them before. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I watch. I've watched your podcast with obviously the boys from football and yeah. I enjoyed it, do you know what I mean? So Okay, well um, I've decided to go down a different route and just properly line you up today. So <laughs> I would never <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I would have. But um, how are you feeling, man? Because um you've been gone a long time on your way back. How are you feeling? Oh, it's been it's been a long old journey. Um but yeah, almost at the end now. Um, obviously I, I had the actual injury in two days before Christmas last year 23rd of December ACL meniscus um, so I had that repaired and my aim was to get back in nine months which I was kind of on course for and then right at the end of that about eight and a half months in had a little setback had to go in have another operation on my knee come back and then I picked up like a couple of just little niggle niggles which is like expected once you've been out for 10 11 months your body's just getting used to training again at the intensity and yeah so it's been tough but almost there now yeah what was the um the setback you had what, what actually happened so it's just it was literally just um I was in a gym and I was doing some jumping jumped onto a box and as I've landed, I just felt like like a little bit of a crack in my knee. And we, um, it kind of went away. The pain went away. It was fine. Let it settle for like two days. And then I went back out on the grass. And then every day for like a week, it was getting worse. Yeah. So I was like, I need to, I need to get this scanned. So I got it scanned. And it, it was something that the surgeon warned us about from the first injury that it could happen. Obviously, you never think it's going to happen to you, but obviously, yeah, my meniscus had torn again, so they had to go in and repair that, just like a scope. But it just puts an extra like six weeks on it, so yeah, that was tough to take at the time. Yeah, but you're, you know, you're back now, and um, you know, you had a under twenty three game. Was it last week? Was it last week? Last week, yeah. Um, did you get through? Well, I, I doubt you got through the whole game. You would have done well to get through the the whole of that. Um, how, how long? Did yeah. you <laughs> I done a, I done forty five minutes, so I just done the first half, and then I'm building up to do, I'll do like sixty or seventy five minutes next one, mm, mm. and then I'll probably do one ninety, and then I'll be back involved with a, with a first team. But yeah, it felt felt so good, man, to get back out there and just, just like little things, putting the boots on, shin pads, putting a shirt on, mm. it's unreal, man. Were you blowing? Do you know what? I actually didn't feel that bad. I've done I've done so much fitness yeah. Mm. Like when you're coming back from these long term injuries, like, we've been on the grass for like six to eight weeks just pure running. Mm. So like fitness wise felt fine. It's more like that match fitness. Yeah. So yeah. like just sharpness of like turning, knowing where the ball's gonna go, all that kind of thing, that's still off it, do you know what I mean? That's the yeah. stuff you can only get by playing games. You can't get it. You can train as much as you want, you're never going to be able to get it in training. Yeah, no, 100%. And I remember when um, I was coming back from my injury a couple of years ago, so when I, I broke tib and fib, and then I remember coming back, it was 
the hardest bit was mental. It was yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, and and then funny enough for me, I remember someone just clattered me. I remember in training as well, they just clattered me, and then that kind of helped get over it. But for you, like, well, what's it like for you? Like, do you think twice about you know the sudden changes of direction and everything, or yeah. it, I was it out of your mind quickly? Exactly what you just said, yeah, happened to me. So I started training, and like every day. I trained I felt more confident like my thing was coming into contact mm. so I like to use like my hips and my shoulders like to I like to feel people so like it felt weird for me to shoulder barge into people and like see yeah. if my knee could take it you know what I mean that kind of thing and every day I got better at it but then I still hadn't really had a tackle mm. and I was still a little bit wary of going into tackles stuff like that. and then played this game first 10 minutes kid just clattered me and I was like wow I didn't I kind of didn't expect it and I've jumped up and it was the best thing yeah. that happened to me yeah no. best thing because after I was like I didn't even think about my knee changed direction I was just involved in the game mm. knee had gone out my head I knew I was all right I can get tackled out so I'm fine so yeah. yeah it was the best thing that happened to me yeah and then and now moving forward obviously now that you know you've come through it unscathed you must be itching to get back you must be yeah it's been it's, do you know what? I've said this before. Like, when I watch the boys, so I watch every game, watch them play. Mm. When they're doing well, it's almost harder mm. to watch. When they're, when, they're, when they're not doing well, if they're losing, it's like, oh, yeah, you feel like sorry for them and you feel like, I wish I could be out there to help them because you just feel helpless, which is a bad feeling. But then I think when they're winning, I just think, oh, I want to I feel that. Do you know what I mean? I want to be part of that. And you don't you don't feel part of it as much as you can be involved with the changing room, go and watch the games. You're not it's not the same. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I, so I, I, I just I just can't I just can't wait to get out there. Yeah, at, at them levels though, like um, who's who has the final say? Because obviously, like you might want to go out there tomorrow and and play. Yeah. But is it you that ultimately gets the final say, or do you, do you literally have to wait for like a physio or someone to be like, okay, now he can play? So, at the end of the day, it's, it's my body. So, if I'm saying I'm good to go, then that's on me. If anything goes wrong or if I pick up another injury, that's, if I make that decision myself, then that's, that's, that's on my shoulders. But obviously, through this whole process, it's kind of come down to like loads of different inputs. So, it would be like me, the physio department, the management department, my surgeon, and us between them four groups and me we'll come to like kind of how we're going to transition back into playing. Mm. So we, we made the decision to play free under 23 slash reserve games. And then once I come through them, then it's up to me. Do I feel ready to go and play in the first team? Do I feel like I need another game in the 23s? Mm. And that's how we kind of played it. Yeah. I know um, we get a load of like, Blackburn fans actually watching this and without putting too much pressure like realistically how long is it till they can maybe like expect to see you back on that on that pitch because we ain't even started talking about the fact that you were an important player you still are an important player for them so you know sometimes these players that get injured the team can go without them do you know what I mean and um, you yeah. actually are a big part of the team so I know they're itching to see you get back and realistically how long in your eyes before you think that, you know, you can make that. So, we're looking at maybe two or three weeks. Oh, it's not even... Two or three weeks um, available for selection for the first team, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So not, not far away. And it's almost pretty much a year to the day. Why are you smiling so much? Why are you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm buzzing, man. I just can't, honestly can't wait to just play a game again, like. Just can't wait. Yeah. Um, and last on the, on the injury, how much of the actual injury do you remember? All of it. At the time? Like, vividly. I could play, could play it in my head over and over again. That's probably the, the most... Annoying, remember every... That, that's probably the most annoying part, the fact that you think, if I had maybe just bottled that, ta that tackle or just withheld it, uh, you'd be fine, innit? Because I think I... Yeah. I think I remember seeing that. The video, actually. 
it was just it was it was I, I said this straight yeah i said it straight after like i didn't need to go for the ball like it was the ball was running out of play i was no i was never going to keep it in but i still tried to keep it in and that's how i've done it just got kind of knocked as i've tried to like stretch around a player to keep the ball in he's kind of nudged into me to stop me from getting it and then as i landed that's when it went so but i think i said this straight after like why the fuck did i go for that ball all this stuff but it's impossible do you know what i mean you can't yeah, really, any other any other day any other match you do that nothing yeah. happens you, you get i've done that movement probably ten thousand times mm. in my whole career mm. the same thing so how can i ever play like can't go for that because I might do this. I can't go for that because I might. Do you know what I mean? It's just you can't play football like that. And I think if you do, you're never going to get to a level that I want to try and get to. Yeah. And what is that level that you're you're trying to get to? Because um, the general feeling I get when I have spoken to like um, oh, by the way, they're buzzing that you're going to be on this. By the way, honestly, they they're flipping. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of them do actually feel that. Um, you are Premier League quality. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and ultimately, ultimately, every player wants to play at the top. But for you, is that your ambition as well, to, to get to that top level? Yeah, it's always been my ambition to, to play in the Prem. That's, I've made no secret of that ever. Like, obviously, I want it to be with Rovers, but you know, I had an opportunity to go to the Prem and I'd grab it with both hands. Like, that's what I want to do in my career. That's what I've wanted to do since I was 18. And, it's never, ever going to change. And I feel, I'm confident in my ability to, I feel like I could play in the Premier League and I feel like I could do well in the Premier League, but obviously never had that opportunity or never got there with a the club I'm at kind of thing. So mm. I feel like this season as well is probably the best chance I've ever had in my career to get promoted with, with Blackburn, 100%. I was, I was going to um, touch on that as well, the fact that I think you guys are like 10th or something like that, but there's proper optimism that you guys can actually go on and, and, and do something. And last year, obviously, you know, you guys just fell short um, at the last moments. But within the, within the team, what is the energy like regarding promotion? Is it something that, you know what, we're really, really pushing for and we really, really feel we can get it? Yeah. We are pushing to get promoted. Without a shadow of a doubt, I feel like if we was to finish outside the top six, mm. Everyone would, everyone in that change room would see it as a disappointment, mm. as we didn't, we didn't do what we set out to do at the start of the season. Mm. And I think, from what I've seen, the way the boys are playing since I come back into training, like everything's gone up another level. From when I left, from when I got injured, to now, it's like a completely different. It's like a completely different team. Like it's crazy, really, the the, the difference that I've seen. And I feel like this squad is by far the best squad we've had since I've been at the club. Yeah. And do you feel like a lot of the like the, the change in quality and the change in intensity and stuff is down to the fact that you guys narrowly missed out last year and you know that you can play better and you can do a lot better than what you showed at times last season? I think it, I think it has to play a part. I think the fact probably the last two seasons we've come... Not close, but mm. probably two or three games here and there that we should have got results in would have maybe got us in the top six. It does hurt, do you know what I mean? Mm. Although we weren't probably at the start of last season and the start of the season before, we was never thinking we should get in the playoffs. We was thinking maybe we've got an outside chance, put a good run together, we'll get in there. But whereas this season, the mentality is completely different. Yeah. It's, we need to be in the top six. This team has to be in the top six. It's good enough to be in the top six. We've proved in the games we've played, yeah, we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to be this season. But there's games where people will 100% be like sitting up, taking notice of us. Yeah. It's, Beating it's, Wickham 5 0, Coventry 4 0, all these games, people will look at us and be like, they're a good side. Yeah. It's, it's mad though, because normally when, like, when people look at the championship, and I don't know if it's because obviously. You know, there's there's quite a few number of players in, in the team who who are, who are chat to and stuff like that. But it seems that now people are mentioning the Blackburns now. 
you know, they are mentioning Blackburn as a team that can challenge or should be there and thereabouts in regards to the playoffs. And I don't know if it's, if that's got to do with the fact that, well, Adam Armstrong is bloody flying. Um, you've got Jono, who's, who's just, I think ever since, ever since he's, he's really started speaking to me properly, I feel like his performances have just gone. <laughs> He's taking credit for him, yeah, for his oh, of, of, for his form this year. Yeah, of, of course, and um, yeah, like the, the squad is just actually just looking so much, so much better. And and why is that? Because it there wasn't a lot of change in regards to income, and so is that just down to the fact that you know you lot are using your experience of missing out last year and then just you know pushing on. I think that does play a part a little bit, but I think. The main reason, the main reason, one people are now talking about us is just the brand of football we're playing. I think we play attacking football, try and score as many goals as we can. Like you said, you have got Armstrong, Bereton, Elliot, Dolan, Gallagher, all these attacking players, Rothwell, who are scoring goals, creating goals, and it's exciting to watch. An exciting team to watch. People take notice, and that's why people start talking about us. And then I think also sometimes it takes periods of time to get to where you want to get to. Not everything's like a manager comes in, his ideas, and then within a season you're promoted. Yeah. If you look at like Sheffield United, took them three years to get to where they was. Liverpool even, Klopp was there, what, three years before they got to the level that they wanted to be at. And I think this is what the gaffers third year now in the champ with us and I think now is where you're starting to see all these ideas are now become habits for the for the players yeah do you know what I mean and I think that's where we're at right now and we're not we're no longer a team in transition like gone up from league one trying to stay in the champ we're now gone past that and we're trying to get promoted from the champ yeah yeah no I, I totally hear that who, who in your team do you look at and think this is a new player. Because obviously everyone, I know Dolan's getting quite quite a few um, quite a few plaudits, but is there anyone that you're looking at thinking, oh wow, this is just, he's just absolutely brilliant and key to anything that you might um, achieve this season? I think obviously the obvious one's Armour's the key one. Mm-hmm. Uh, got to keep Armstrong fit. He's going to get you 20 goals plus easy. Um, but I always knew, you always knew with Armour that he had that in him. Yeah, and everyone forgot how young he was because he'd been playing for so long. It was like you forget the fact he's only like twenty twenty one, and now he's I think he's twenty three now, and he's really stepped his game up. So, but he was the obvious one. But I think the two that I've come I've come back and like they're different players now is Ben Burton and Joe Rothwell. I think they're them two are key, massive yeah. players for us now. Yeah, Joe's obviously probably technically the best player we have in the team and he's really kicked on looks confident and exactly the same with Ben mm. Ben Ben was nowhere near the player he is again when I got injured to his now he's sharper stronger better in front of goal more confident and it's, it's good to watch do you know what I mean yeah it's, it's funny because I had I had Jono on my on my channel mm. last Friday just doing a, a weekend prediction whatever and the team yeah. were in the hotel, and um, Burton was in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think they were watching the Coventry game or whoever it was that was playing. And then in the comments, everyone was just like, "Oh, Burton, he's going to score. He's 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 going to score soon, and and um, and he's going to have an absolute worldie." And then whatever whatever happened, and what does he go and do? He scores, and then, <laughs> and, then and then he assisted. So I'm taking credit for that one as well, mate. I'm definitely. We're gonna, have to get, we're gonna have to get you in, man. As like a consultant or something. No, I, I don't think they can afford me. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they can afford me. But um, what I did want to talk to you about, yeah, and it's a, it's a funny one. The other day, now, nah, um, and I didn't, I didn't find, I didn't think that there was a problem with it, and you didn't think there was a problem with it. The um, was it Preston's Preston's player? Yeah, when he's gone and got a bit of a handful, and yeah, and all I was thinking was anyone that's actually played football, even at Sunday league level or whatever, 
happens all the time. Happens all the time. Like, how harsh is it that they've given him a three-match ban for that? I just think it's crazy. And I, I know I tweeted about it, and I was probably like 50-50, you know, on, my, on, the, on the replies. It was like people were saying what I was saying, laughable. And then there was people saying, no, nah, it's, it's wrong. Shit can't happen. It's, it's a suit if that's And like... Thing. Yeah, that's, 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 that was the main thing. Like, mm. People were saying to me, if you've done that to someone on the street, it's sexual assault. Yeah, I understand that, but we're not on the street. Mm. We're on a football pitch. So it's different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and if you ain't played the game, you're, you're never going to think how we're thinking. Mm. I don't think. Yeah, and, and but it's funny. I could, hundreds of times, hundreds of times, I reckon throughout my career, it's happened. Mm. To me... I've done it. it happens every game. Every game it'll happen. In the box at a corner. It's just something that goes on. Yeah, I think the game is just, just it's going mad. And um, yeah. I think with all of these rule changes and whatnot, it's just, I think they're, they're slowly killing the, killing the sport right now. Even, and it's going to get worse. I want to say when you lot get to the Premier League, it's going to get worse because then you've got the VAR in and VAR, yeah. things coming, things are under more scrutiny. And you're looking at some of the handballs and and some of the decisions. It's all gone mad. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's I saw Man United get um, a penalty the other day, the handball, and he couldn't do nothing about it. West Brom, yeah. Yeah, he couldn't. Oh, but on the flip side, do you think that was a penalty though against United? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, it's, it, he kicked. He had to. He kicked through his shin and he barely touched the ball. But he kicked through. He hit his shin before he hit the ball. I can't. I cannot believe it got overturned. Like, but this VAR is, is so bad, man. Like, the offside and that. I just. You know when they're offside. See how Bamford was offside, Joe, yeah, when he was pointing. Yeah. And they're saying it's his shoulder or whatever it is, his armpit. How can they, the people doing the lines? How can they tell me? where his armpit starts and his armpit stops. <laughs> How can they put the line on it to be like, that's where his armpit He's got a shirt on, so mm. you don't know. He might have big armpits, you know what I mean? How do you know it's not? It's, and it's, it's crazy because his feet were like way behind the, like, the, the line. And, and this is what I'm saying. Like, I, I think the referees yeah. are just, they're, they're starting to bottle it a bit. Definitely starting yeah. to bottle it and, and be safe and and um, I was saying the other day um, on one of my podcasts that I think the referee should actually be interviewed after the games now. 100%, I think. I think. I've always said that. Yeah, I, I think they should come out and actually just be like, okay, I made a mistake or I, I gave this foul for whatever reason. Or, but because it's like they make these mistakes, or not even mistakes, but they make these decisions and they're not held accountable to it. And, and this is exactly the highest level. Do you get what I'm saying? So at least come out and explain it. Hold your hands up if you need to and whatnot. But it's like they hide and if yeah. And if, yeah, if they did that, they'd have so much more respect you know what I'm saying? in the game. If the, ref, if the ref come out and said, like, say he made a mistake and it's clear as day he's made a mistake. If he come out and explained why he made the mistake, mm. if he said, do you know what? I couldn't really see it or I weren't 100% sure it was a penalty so I couldn't give it, or whatever it might be, if he actually explained why he made the decision, mm. even though it was wrong, he, they'd, they would get so, there'd be less stress for them. Exactly. they get hammered in the press, in the media. If they come out and spoke, they wouldn't get as hammered at all. Nowhere near. Exactly. I, I think it's a no-brainer, but I don't think that'll ever happen anyway. Do you know what I mean? I think they're just <laughs> no, no way. The most respected, I mean, the most protected people, but... Um, who did you grow up yeah. supporting? Because you are, you're from South London, right? South, I'm from South, yeah. Um, I was a Man United fan, yeah. One of them ones. One of those what, what, London Man United fans, yeah. Why are you a Man United fan? <laughs> what, what was that about? Was it just that like, there's a player you looked up? I bet it was Beckham, innit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> how did I know? How did I know Beckham? Yeah. So, uh, so my, dad, my, dad, my dad's a Spurs fan, so... When I was like, when I first started watching football, four or five, I was, I love Spurs. And then obviously during the 90s, the only team that was like winning and on telly 
Man United. So, and I love Beckham. Loved him. Yeah. To be fair, so, turn over to United. I liked him even more when he left United. <laughs> <laughs> I cried the day he left United. I, I, well, that just shows that you're a bit of a baby, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, he was a top, top player. Um, who did you model your game on, though, growing up? Was there someone who who influenced the way you play? Yeah, so I always, I loved Lampard and Gerrard. Mm. Mm. I just loved, probably more, I loved watching Gerrard more, but then I based my game more off Lampard. As I, I, When I got older, this was like, when I was between that 10 and 16, I was just playing whatever, however I wanted. And then at like 16, I started to study the game more. Mm. And I watched a lot of Lampard and the way he scored goals, really. Yeah. And I felt like that's what I was kind of good at. Always, I always scored goals, no matter who I played for, where I played. And he was the one that I kind of looked at and was like, right, watch him because he does it the best. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was having a conversation today with one of my friends who loves Bruno. Absolutely loves Bruno Fernandes. And then um, someone else in the group chat was saying that he's the modern day Frank Lampard. And then this whole conversation got brought up and and I don't feel that like people give Lampard enough credit for um to get the goals. Obviously he scores goals and whatever, but I don't think people give used to get the twenty goals. goals a season, every single season. But do you know what else I liked about Lampard? He would get all those goals but still do his job as a centre midfielder. You get me? Yeah. Like, the job came first and then the goals, but everyone just remembers him for the goals and and when they said that to me about Bruno Fernandes, I was just like, wow, you guys are really... No way. Yeah, n- never, never, never. Who are you like, enjoying watching though in the league right now? Play in the up. league? Um, I love watching De Bruyne, man. <sighs> De Bruyne is the one for me. He's the best midfielder in the world for me. You know what? I'm not even going to disagree with that, but I'm not going to agree either. But um, sorry to bring it back. <laughs> well, wow. who, who would you? Who would your best midfielder in the world be? Oh no, no, I, I genuinely don't know. But KDB is oh, definitely yeah. up there. KDB is definitely up there. And the reason why I'm saying I'm saying how I'm saying it is because back to the Bruno argument. My friend was talking about he's the best because he's got all these goals and whatever. And my thing is okay, but if you're not scoring goals, like. I still need you to influence the game and, and, and have an impact or yeah. whatever. And then I said, um, Bruno gets more goals and assists combined than KDB does, but you'll never say he's better than KDB. Why is that? Do you know what no. I'm saying? Like, anyone that watches football will tell you KDB is a better, the better player. So for me, he's definitely yeah. one of the best up there. My mind is going blank right now in regards to midfielders. Which other midfielders are around right now? Um, yeah, my mind's proper gone blank right now. I don't know. But well, KDB is definitely there's not many. Yeah, there's not really not many about that. You know, you've got the ones that are on the decline now, like Modric, he's been around for, for a, a while. Yeah, Tony Cruz, Busquets, all them, yeah. but they're not. I just love the Bruno. He's so like dynamic. He, he's like Gerard. That's who he reminds me of. Reminds yeah. me of Gerard. Yeah. And like leggy, big long strides, powerful. And he can win you a game even without scoring. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. He's a, he's a, he's yeah. a top, top, top player. Top, top player. Um, what do you think of United's season so far, being a United fan? Are you one of those that uh, you're not having Oli? Or, or would you rather not say? I don't know. Like, It's a tough one. I've spoken about it a few times with, with different people. Like, I just don't... If you do sack him, I just feel like you just continuing the cycle that have gone apart, gone over the last seven years. Mm. So David Moyes come in, got seven months, so he didn't have a chance to build his team. Van Gaal comes in, gets 18 months, probably starting to build a team, sacked. Do you know what I mean? We've gone round that cycle. Mourinho comes in, starts to build a team, sacked. So just give him time. Yeah. I think you have to give him time. Let him, let him get his players in, let him get the players out he wants. To give him like this is his first full season, do you know what I mean? Mm. Give him this season, 
see where you are at the end of the season. If you finish outside the Champions League, then maybe say, Do you know what, thanks, but we're going to go somewhere else. Mm. But I don't think, if you sack him now, what's the point? I think as a as a Arsenal fan, and I don't like seeing United do well, I think he's got to stay. I think he's got to stay. Yeah. Because, um, no, because I, d- I don't think you're not that great with him in charge. I think if, if another manager, if another manager had that same set of players, ridiculous. But like you said, you can't at the same time you can't go around just repeating cycles and, and sacking managers. Like me as an Arsenal fan, everyone's always telling me, or not everyone, but a load of people are like Arteta oh, out. And I'm like, that makes no sense. Cause you you said at the beginning, um, in regards to uh, managers that like, um your your gaff has been there for three years now. Klopp's been there for three, four years now, however long he's been there. And, and in the beginning, it's never a happy day straight away. Do you get what I'm saying? It takes time. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm on that one. Just just give it time and, and we'll see how it goes. Off the the only thing I'd say about... Sorry. The only thing I'd say about Solskjaer is it's hard to see, like... See, like with Arsenal, mm. you can see Arteta's got a way of playing, an identity that he's putting into the team. And you can see what they're trying to do, where they're trying to go with it. And it, you can see it takes time. Like when Klopp come in, you could see what they was trying to do. They didn't have the players to do it. But over time, the, he got the players. And now you, you see what they're doing. Same as Guardiola. Same as what Mourinho does, even though he does it a different way because he plays defensive football. You see Spurs now from where they was when he took over. Different team. Yeah. Whereas Solskjaer, it just looks like Vibes. he's off. He's off winging it. Yeah, no, that, that, that's it. It's literally you go out there and just and you just vibes and just see see how it goes, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's why they can lose six one to Tottenham at home and then go and beat PSG. Yeah, that's not the sign of a good team. It's not the sign of a good team, man. Long may it continue, mate. Long <laughs> may it continue. But um, yeah, you look like you've actually um like lost a bit. Have you lost a bit of weight? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're happy with I, that. Had, <laughs> I had to because, uh, yeah, like obviously, when I was injured, I wasn't doing anything. So I was like trying, you're trying to look after your weight, but then at the same time, like your head's all over the place. So you're just like, oh, I'm not playing football for six, seven months. But then the last like 12 weeks, I've been, I just smashed it. Got, I wanted to make sure I come back the fittest I had ever been in my career, the strongest I'd ever been, the most powerful. And I've kind of I've seen the benefits of it in the gym. Just yeah. all the all like the data and that just telling me, yeah, I'm better now than I was athletically wise, I'm better now than I was before I was injured, which is what my goal was. Oh, so it had nothing to do with like shooting the latest episode of Olivia Meets Her Match. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so when, when, when I'm gonna see an episode of you just your top off just doing some sort of task or something. <laughs> no, nah, man. No. Nah. <laughs> what's what's I'll that? keep what's that for the boys at football. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's <laughs> that like for you? You know, because obviously you're a footballer first, but you're also this semi... As far as players in the championship go, you're probably one of the more high-profile ones, if you don't mind me saying that. Is that... Yeah. Can that sometimes be a bit of a distraction? Um, I think maybe people could look at it and think, oh, that could be a distraction. But mm. the way I see it was, I, I spoke at length with my missus and the people that were making the show. And I said, listen, football's first. That's my job. That's the thing I love to do. Mm. You ain't ever going to distract me away from it. So if I'm, if there's something I've got to do with football, I want to do something, I want to train longer or something, then you guys have to wait kind of thing. And they understood that. And it's one of those things, TV wasn't something, still isn't something that I want to do. I don't enjoy it massively, but I do it because that's her job. And I'd be a bad person if I was, if I weren't supporting her in what she does. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, that's, so that's why, that's why I've done it, to support her. She wanted me to do it, so I said, you know what, I'll, I'll have a go. And it's actually been quite fun. And I'll, I was a bit worried before, like, the first episode come out, that how it had kind of portrayed me. But mm. I think it 
portrayed me in the way I wanted it to and that's that I only really care about football and that's all I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Well said, well said. That's, that's not very media at all, that answer. Um, but <laughs> what, 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 um, <laughs> you, know, you guys are um, engaged and um, we're not going to make about them, but I'm going to make it about you too. But um, have you got a golf course at where you're going to get married now? We have got a golf course. It's about two minutes down the road, so oh, okay. it's all I asked for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because I, I, I thought you wanted. Bit, you was a bit heartbroken when, when you found out, mate. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was gutted, mate. I was gutted. Yeah, is, is it? Annoying? I was going to call the wedding off, you know, if, if there weren't one club. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Is no, she there? I wouldn't. Oh, okay. no, she's in the other room. Oh, I thought, I thought you were saying it so she can hear me. I was about to say. <laughs> But um, last, <laughs> last, last on that, um, is it annoying when you get, when you're walking out maybe for a coffee or whatever and then you've got these people following you around with a bloody camera? How annoying can that be at times? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it can, it can be a little bit annoying, especially if it's like, it's not so much for me, but for her, like if she gets up and she's got no makeup on and she's just... Literally, like you said, just going down the shop to get a coffee mm. and there's someone pointing a camera in your face like on a Sunday morning. It's, it's just like a bit of an in, invasion of privacy, but it's what you kind of signed up for. So, yeah, what can you say? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not, not the nicest thing in the world, but mm. just get on with it. Yeah, but, um, you know, all this, all this TV stuff and whatever, it's, it's probably been a good relief for you anyway. Um, and a good way to keep your mind off yeah. when you're injured. But now that we are got going back to football now, when you do look at the championship, um, what teams are there in the league that you look at and you think, oh, they're going to be tough to beat or they're like one of the, the shorties to go up? I honestly think the champ's so open this year. I don't think there's anyone that I'd say... I don't really want to play them like this. They're a good side. Mm. I think the three, probably the three sides that got relegated are the three that you'd look at and go, yeah, they're decent. Bournemouth, Watford, Norwich. I think they're in the top four now. They're probably the, the three that I, you'd look at, but I don't think you can fear anyone, especially this season. I just think there's no one that's going to run away with it. Yeah. No way. It's not like I think Leeds. it'll go right down to the wire. It's not like Leeds and like... Yeah. West Brom and 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 them and them no no Leeds Leeds West Brom and Fulham it was like yeah. them yeah they they just they, they was always going to get promoted there was no questions mm. I think this year no one to be able to call it I think it's going to be it's going to be tight what about what about player wise who's who stood out from other teams that um, you look at and you think wow because last year obviously everyone and it's still pretty early in the season but you know Ben Arama was Ben Arama was the like standout one whenever I asked whenever I spoke to people on yeah the podcast, they'd always mention Ben Rama Oli Watkins and um, Pereira sick yeah Pereira they'd mention but um, looking at the league this year who is there that you're looking at thinking nah oh, that's a player right there I think the kid at uh, Watford uh, Saar Saar oh yeah 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 and the winger yeah, it's funny yeah, him. because I know there was a lot of talk about a lot of top teams um, going after him during like the off season and whatever. And, yeah, and Liverpool, innit? Liverpool were the ones that were like linked with him the most. Yeah, so um, I wanted to. It's, it's interesting. I wanted to see how we how we went along, how, how we got along this year. So for you to say that, then it must mean that he's actually you know doing all right. I've not seen yeah. these games. The boys, the boys when they played Watford said. That he was the he's the best player they've played against mm. oh, wow. this season. That's good, man. That's yeah. good. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much us all done. I told you I wasn't going to keep you long. Hope you've um, <laughs> hope you've enjoyed I've enjoyed it, it man. Yeah, I, I wish. Nice I... to just chat about football. Yeah, no, I, get I'm away sure. from the misses. Yeah, no, trust me, always. I would um talk long with you but I was quite bored to be on no, I, I would I was never bored. I was never bored. <laughs> <laughs> I was never bored. But yeah, no, um it's been great man and um 
I really do hope that when you come back, you know, you come back and you come back playing well and, you know, oh, what's your actual goals for the for the season? Like, do you have in your head, um, like, the amount of games you want to maybe get through, the amount of goals you want to score? Because before you got injured, when I do think of you, I, I do think of a goal scoring midfielder. Do, do you know what I mean? So, is that yeah. something that you still got in your head that like, if I can get maybe ten goals by the end of the season, or have you got something in your head that you want to achieve? Yeah. So I always, I've got a goal target but I don't let anyone know that. Mm. Um, I have one of those every season. But then I think a target that I have set myself is to try and play 20 league games, mm. which is something that I should do. At the start of the season, when I first on my injury, I had it down, try and play 30 league games. It was obviously with the, with the extra operation. Mm. I put it down to 20. And that might seem like quite a small amount when there's probably like 40 games left. But... Yeah, for me personally, I think it, yeah, it'd be nice to get to to twenty twenty games for the season. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and it's funny to get promoted. Yeah. Ah, oh, listen. That's that the ultimate. Be... That's the ultimate aim. And with, for the prem. And with fans, hopefully, back in the stadium. So. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. horrible, isn't it? Yeah. Horrible, now, um, wait, but you guys, I think I saw somewhere that that Blackburn. Um, I don't think we'll be allowed because yeah. we're. Uh, yeah, I think I think Blackburn will stay in tier three or tier four, whatever it is. But I don't think there'll be fans at our games for for a while or at Ewood Park anyway. Yeah, that's that's going to be um, but, a bit of a bit of a bummer, you know, a bit of a bummer. But at least do you think that's a bit of a. Uh, do you think that's a bit of like an advantage though, if some teams can have fans and some can't? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because isn't it? Yeah, there are certain teams who, to be honest, most teams will do better with with your fans, with, with their fans. There, do you get what I'm saying? Especially if you know you're going to away games and there's no home. I mean, there's no away fans there. It's just home ones. There are Not away teams, fans. Yeah, yeah. There, there are certain teams where, like Man City, without fans, I always think they're they're the better team because without the, without you know fans, they're just unreal. But you know, it's a bit unfair if. You're, if you're going to a ground and and they've got their fans in, because and some allow four thousand. That's a that's a lot of fans when you're used to having. That's, that's, do you know what I mean? And then, yeah, it'll be loud. Like it'll be louder than you think. Exactly, and um, I don't know. Are any of those allowed to be away fans? I don't think so. Look at that. And then you're going to think go it's to just home. Fans. Exactly. You're going to go back to Ewood Park, and then. No one's gonna be there again, and it's yeah, it's a bit unfair. And you know, what can you do, man? What can you do? But a uh, bigger picture, at least there's fans back in the stadium. Like, yeah. I think football's a lot worse without fans. Yeah, a lot, a lot worse. Hundred percent. As soon as you guys are allowed fans, I'll definitely be down for a game or two. And um, get up to Ewood, man. I take you for a tour around the change room and that. Sit you up in the box. Oh, thank you. You're so kind, mate. Thanks, mate. Like, oh. Look after the boys, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you, mate. What else? What else? I know that. He don't even... <laughs> you know, he's flipping giving you nothing. Mate. No, I'm joking. No, he's, he's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. But, um, yeah. So, thank you very much for doing this. This is actually going to probably be out maybe tomorrow. No problem. My pleasure. It's probably going to be out tomorrow. So, um, perfect. Yeah, and those those at home watching this, hope you've enjoyed it. Get at get at Daki and wish him well, and and um, subscribe, like, share, all of that good stuff. And um, yeah, until next time, in a bit. Cheers, brother. Thank. You.